Pin number 72. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene and wonder how he could love me, a sinner condemned and clean. How marvelous, how wonderful, and my soul shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Christ. Thank you that he came and bore all those burdens on Calvary like we studied in Sunday school. And God, thank you for your great love to us, Lord. It is truly marvelous and wonderful. God, I pray you take the hearts of every man, woman, boy, and girl in this place. And God, touch them. And God, show them your truth this morning, Lord. Help me, God, as I preach what you'd have me to say. And God, I pray you be with the ones that couldn't come because they were sick. And the Lord uh, raised them up and healed them up and bring them back to church. Lord, we love them and we miss them when they're not here. God, and we get concerned about them. And God, I pray you just uh, help all the ones on the prayer list. God, I, I pray you just help especially Carol and Lord Desiree. She's come through this uh, cancer operation. And Lord, uh, God, all the rest of them uh, that's on the list. Lord, help them, God. And bless us now as we look to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Listen to the words on this one, folks. It's a good song. Oh, soul, are you weary and troubled? No light in the darkness you see. There's light for a look at the Savior, and life for a abundant and free. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in His wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of His glory and grace. Follow him there. Over us in no more. 
aliens. Yeah, I got it. Okay. Good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Turn to Psalm 103. Psalm 103. We're going to look at two or three verses there in Psalm 103. Now, now, I, I've usually I preach a whole bunch of uh, verses out of this psalm, but we're going to look at. Uh, a Bible passage. Now, I'm a Bible preacher. I'm a Bible believer. I, I believe what the Bible says. And, and um, the Bible talks about ministers uh, preaching the whole counsel of God. And so this is one of those things. Some of it, you know, uh, is, is you're going to say, well, why in the world do I care about this? But you need to know it. And it's important. Just because God said it. Okay. Um, I, I knew a preacher, he got up and he quoted the first three uh, names in the book of First Chronicles and preached a whole hour and a half. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm not going to do that, but uh, every word of God uh, is uh, pure, the Bible says. Every word of God is important. So, Psalm 103, look there in uh, verse number 20. Verse number 20. This is the end of the psalm. Um... And it, talks, it says, bless the Lord. And, and these verses here starts out that way. It says, bless the Lord, ye his angels, that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. Bless uh, ye the Lord, all ye his hosts, ye ministers of his, that do his pleasure. Bless the Lord, all the works, his works, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Heavenly Father, help us to bless the Lord. Help us to understand uh, what God is trying to tell us here. And God, help us to be people that bless you and not, not curse you or bring you sadness, Lord. Help us now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now look, God has the power to do anything. Young man, God can do anything. God could make you an elephant right now if he wanted to. But he doesn't want to. Thank goodness. Amen. Uh, you'd break the pew. I mean, you'd just be a big old elephant and you'd go crunch and you'd break a pew. Uh, but he could do that if he wanted to. Um, he could, uh, if he wanted to, he could appear to every single soul on this planet and witness to them. He could do that if he wanted to. He could just appear and say, hey, I'm going to give you the gospel right now. Uh, but that's not his plan. That's not his plan. His plan is a different thing. He, he's got a plan for his servants to get in on the blessing. And when they get on the blessing, they say, bless the Lord. They, they give God the blessing back. So this morning, let's look at who God commanded to carry out this blessing he wants to give mankind. Because he's got the blessing to give everybody. You know, salvation is one of them. Uh, going to heaven once you're saved, living forever is another one. There's all kinds of blessings God wants to pass out, but who's the ones that's going to go out and tell people? Who's the ones that's going to carry out this blessing? Well, let's look. There's three three groups of people here. First of all, the angels. The angels. In one of his verses, it talks about his hosts. Now, uh, when you say host nowadays... You think of someone who's giving a dinner party, okay? <laughs> or the guy at the maitre d' at the restaurant who, you know, takes you to your table and makes sure you have a napkin and some water and stuff. That's not the kind of host we're talking about. We're talking about the heavenly host of angels. And there's skadoodles of them. Um, even one of them is very powerful. Uh, now, we don't talk much about angels in this church, but there are such a thing as angels. And you need to know there are such things. And you need to know they're part of God's plan. Uh, now, remember when uh, Samson was born. Before he was born, what, what did God do? He sent an angel to talk to uh, mom and dad, uh, Samson. And uh, then, uh, then he uh, come along a little later and appeared to another person. 
Uh, and then, then when Jesus was born, remember the shepherds were out in the field at night and he appeared, a bunch of them appeared to, to the shepherds and sang to them and, and stuff. Um, they, they were sent by God to comfort Jesus at a couple places during his ministry. Uh, when he got resurrected, a couple of them appeared uh, at, at the, the tomb and said, he's not here. Uh, when he went to heaven and ascended up into heaven, a couple of them said, why staying here gazing up into heaven? I mean, so God uses his angels. Now, not so much nowadays, but we need to know about them. Um, angels were made to be God's creatures. Uh, in the Bible... Uh, in Genesis 32, 2, uh, it says, And Jacob went on his way, and the angels of God met him. And when Jacob saw them, he said, This is God's host. And he called the name of the place Mahanamim. That, that means the place of God's hosts. Uh, God has a way of sending his heavenly servants to help. Now, uh, people talk about guardian angels. Um, I don't know if God really does send a, an angel to follow you around or not. Um, I know sometimes when I get in heavy traffic, I'll ask the Lord to put an angel on every fender because I ain't doing so good in the traffic and people are crazy and I need some help. Amen? And maybe God has done that. Uh, you know, later on, Jacob wrestled with a man. And that man happened to be the angel of the Lord. So, but see, angels are meant to be gods. Now, what happened was Satan, he was a cherubim, and he decided he was going to be God, and, and that didn't work out so good. But he ended up taking some of the angels with him, and they did. They came to earth, and they did bad things, and caused the earth to get flooded out. And, and uh, so, just because God made them one way doesn't mean all of them uh, are going to be that way forever. Uh, but that's what God intended. He intended servants to do his heavenly work. Um, and, and what's interesting is this word host. This word host. This word host in the Bible has a military, a military meaning. We would say army. This is God's heavenly army. And when he comes again the second time, these spiritual soldiers are going to be following him and we're going to be part of the gang. And uh, they're, they're, uh, they showed up uh, before in Exodus 14. Um, the Bible says, And I will harden Pharaoh's heart and he shall follow after them and I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon all his hosts. Now, so why would you quote that verse? I wanted to show you that when God said host, he's talking about an army. When Pharaoh went after the children of Israel after they had left Egypt, he took his chariots and his infantry with him, and it was an army, and they call, were called hosts. So the heavenly, you say heavenly host, people talk about the stars. Well, God's talking about his heavenly army. Um, and you know what's, what's weird is these heavenly army men, they're connected with the planets and stars somehow or another. Now, don't ask me how to explain that. I can't. Some people think that maybe the stars really are angels. I don't know. Some of them move around. Some of them stay. Uh, uh, you got me. But in the Bible, it says this. Deuteronomy 4. Lest thou lift up thine eyes unto heaven... And when thou seest the sun and the moon and the stars, even all the host of heaven, shouldst be driven to worship them and serve them, which the Lord thy God hath divided into all nations under the whole heaven. Psalm 104, 4 says, Who maketh his angels spirits as ministers a flame of fire. His ministers a flaming fire. So they're connected with stars and burning suns. And uh, we really don't know what the sun is. Uh, they guess it. Uh, they say it's a big atomic furnace. Oh, maybe God's got the angels in the middle of it stoking the furnace. You never know. What, how God said. We haven't actually gone and put our eyeballs on stuff yet. We send these little probes out. There's one probe that they sent out when I was a kid. And it's still broadcasting. It's uh, Voyager 3. 
and it's out beyond what they call the uh, envelope of the solar system. And they say it's in interstellar space. And they're starting to get the wackiest readings that they don't understand. I wonder why that is. You know, we don't understand everything yet. We think, scientists think they do, but they don't. Uh, and there's a warning. The Bible says that Satan can disguise himself as an angel of light. So all these goofy people that said, the angel Gabriel appeared unto me and he had 600 wings and he was 10 feet tall and he had me write this book and I'm going to give you this book that Gabriel gave, it's called the Koran. Another guy said, well, I found these golden plates and an angel came along and, 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 and translated it for me and I'm going to give you the Book of Mormon. Uh, I'd be careful of people who talk about they got something from an angel. I don't need an angel. You know why? I got a finished book. It was given by God himself. God uses people. Now, I'm not saying God can't send an angel to do stuff. In the future, God's going to send an angel to preach a, a gospel during the tribulation. Not the gospel we preach. But he's going to send that angel. But during this age, the Bible says if anybody, even an angel, preach something different than what's in the Bible for Christians... He's accursed. So you got to be careful. There's a warning there about it. But God does use angels to give blessings to people. The following story was in a newsletter called Our America. Uh, Dottie uh, Gadent, a school teacher for 13 years, decided to travel across America and see the sites she had taught about. Traveling alone in a truck with a camper in tow, she launched out one afternoon rounding a curve on I-5 near Sacramento in rush hour traffic. A water pump blew on her truck and she was tired, exasperated, scared, and alone. In spite of the traffic jam, she caused uh, no one seemed to be interested in helping her. So <laughs> she broke down right smack dab in the middle of the lane and was backing up traffic. No, no one was going to help her to get out of the traffic. Uh, leaning up against her trailer, she prayed, Please, God, send me an angel, preferably one with mechanical experience. <laughs> you know, I've prayed that same prayer. <laughs> I have, honest to goodness. Um, all of a sudden, about four minutes later, a big, huge Harley drove up, uh, ridden by an enormous man sporting long black hair, a beard, tattoos all over his arm, and uh, with an incredible air of confidence, he jumped off, and without even glancing at Doty, went to work on the truck. Within a few minutes, he flagged down a larger truck, attached a tow chain to the frame of the disabled Chevy, and whisked the whole 50-foot rig off the highway onto a side street where he calmly continued to work on the water pump. The intimidated school teacher was too dumbfounded to even talk. <laughs> Especially when she read the paralyzing words on the back of this guy's leather jacket. It said, Hales Angels, California. As he finished... The task, she finally got up the courage to say, thank you so much, and carried on a brief conversation. Noticing her surprise at the whole ordeal, he looked straight into her eyes and mumbled, don't judge a book by its cover. You may not know who you're talking to. With that, he smiled, closed the hood of the truck, straddled his Harley, and waved goodbye as he went fast away on his motorcycle. I say, Brother Jeff, you think that was an angel? I don't know. God can do all kinds of things. But he, he'll he send you a blessing when you need one. Not only does he use angels, the heavenly angels, but he uses his ministers and, and, and soldiers of the cross. Uh, verse 21 talks about his ministers and his hosts. Now, that host could be here on earth or it could be up in heaven. Uh, there are human servants that God has. I'm one of them. Amen. Hopefully you're one of them. Uh, these servants are called by God. 
believe it or not. Isaiah 61, 6 says, You shall be named the priest of the Lord. Men shall call you ministers of our God. Ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory ye, uh, ye boast yourselves. Well, I don't know that I do all the last part of it, but I'm glad to be a minister of God anyway. Amen? Uh, 2 Corinthians 3, 16, Paul said, Who also hath made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. I, I, I want to be a, a spiritual soldier. I want to be a spiritual minister. I'm here to preach the gospel, and that will give you life. During Sunday school, we preached about what happened on the cross. How Jesus suffered and died for us. That suffering was done to give us life. And the Bible says more abundantly. Boy, I tell you what, it's a privilege to get up here and, and tell the words. But you know what? Every Christian can tell. Every Christian can be a witness. Just grab your gospel chart. I know an old fellow in school down the street preaching when I was in, in class. And he, he had just been saved, oh, about a month. And uh, so they, they shoved him up on the corner and said, it's your turn to preach. He said, well, I got nothing to preach. A guy reached around him to his pocket. He had a pocket full of tracks. He pulled it out and said, read that very loud. So God's simple plan of salvation. You are a sinner. And he read the entire thing. Then he got down. If you have been saved today, please fill out this coupon on the back. The address, and he read the address and everything on the back of the track. And then he got down and he said, well, how did I do? And everybody was, you know, just, just about to bust out laughing. Said, oh, you did good. A guy came across the street, got saved. You never know. I mean, somebody called to God. And they got to learn how to do things, you know. Amen. Uh, you know, the Bible professes uh, to have messages from eyewitnesses. Eyewitnesses of what happened with Jesus. All the stuff in the gospel was written by people who actually saw what happened. Luke 1 says, For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth and order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us, even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word. Now, I'm not an eyewitness, but I can minister what the eyewitness has told you in this book. I can preach about the resurrection. I can preach about the cross. I can preach about the time he, he uh, stilled the, the waves on the sea. I can preach about the feeding of the 5,000. I, I, I can preach that because I'm called of God to give you the message. And then as a soldier of the Lord, I have to fight the good fight. Now, the good fight is not a physical fight. We, don't, we do not go around burning down buildings or uh, murdering people or uh, inflicting injury on people for the cause of Christ. That is not what Christ called us to do. We are to fight the spiritual fight. The spiritual things. We are to pray. We are to invoke the word of God. We are to uh, invoke the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we are to tell people the truth. Now, we can be fearless. We can stand up. We can say our peace. Uh, we can, you know, not lose our temper. If they hit us, not hit back. There's all kinds of things we can do and, not, not, and, and do something physical but not injure anybody. 2 Timothy 2, 1 and 4 says, Thou, therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is... In Christ Jesus. So this, this soldiering that we do is in, in grace. It's not in, 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 in uh, hatred. And the things that thou hast heard of me. Among many witnesses. The same commit thou to faithful men. Who shall be able to teach others also. I hope I'm doing that. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life. See, our soldiering is not about affairs of this life. That he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. I'm a soldier in the army. 
in the army of the king of kings. A disgruntled pastor said one day, the people of this town do not want the gospel. He had just decided he was going to resign from his position of a once large congregation now made up of mostly empty pews. I have tried every possible thing I could think of to make the services attractive. They simply will not go to church. The man thought he was telling the truth, yet within two years after he left, the flock of the old church was the center and interest of the entire community. Instead of empty benches, there were not enough seats for the people. What made the difference? A better preacher? Yes and no. The first man imagined the people were tired of the preaching of Christ. In reality, they were tired of the poor substitutes they had been offering them instead of the preaching of Christ. Even worldly men who go up to the temple do not go there to hear scientific dissertations or flowery or orations. They can get them elsewhere, like TV. We would see Jesus, their hearts were saying. Men grew tired of the man who steps uh, between them and the Son of God. But they never grow tired of looking at Christ himself. I hope you come and see Christ himself. The lovely one that died on the cross. That said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. The one that unbowed the... The, the, the woman afflicted all her life. The one that fed the hungry. The one that made the blind to see. The one that calmed the sea and, 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 and preached to his disciples. The one that said, come and dine on the Sea of Tiberias. The soldiers and ministers of Christ are called to give the blessing of God to the people. And finally, this verse here in Psalm 103 says, Bless the Lord all His works. All His works? Well, my, my dear friend, that means you, <laughs> basically. We've gone from the angels of heaven to all the called men of God and prophets and missionaries and preachers and evangelists and all those people to finally we've gotten down to you and me. God wants to use everyone. God can use anyone. Everybody, I want you to do something. I want you to hold your hand out like this and look at it. Look at it. My mind's in rough shape. I've got, I've got some. I got a blister here that I had the other day. I've got some. I've got some dry skin. And, but 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 I look at my hand and, and I see the muscles in the fingers. And being an old man, I've got little wrinkles where all the muscles are. Bend your fingers. See, see, how, see how God made your fingers? How you can hold stuff? He gave you great muscles down there at the bottom of your hand. And a wrist that is more complicated than anything engineers can devise. That hand. Look at the back side. God made that hand. God, whoever made this hand was a mixture of intelligent, uh, loving, uh, mastery of engineering and, and, and whatever it took to make that. What do you think this happened by accident? Some people think this happened by accident. Really? Accident? They, they think this came from little flippers on fish. No, it didn't come from flippers on Job 37 says he sealed up the hand of every man and all men that all men may know his work. Every time you get not believing God's doing his work, look at your hand. Then the beasts go into their dens and remain in their places. Look, monkeys have hands, monkeys have thumbs. But you know what? They they don't make Mercedes Benzes. They don't make uh, they can't use the skill uh, tools and the and the hammers and the stuff. Oh, they can grab them and do stuff with them, uh, but they'll just make a mess and throw them all over the place. Maybe break them. You you put a bunch of monkeys and paper in a room full of typewriters, 
You are not going to get the works of Shakespeare's or anything else. All you're going to get is a bunch of messed up paper and a bunch of messed up typewriters. God made that for a reason. One of the blessings you can be is you can be a blessing to yourself and your family. You take this hand, you go make a living with it. You hold a baby with it. You cook some supper with it. God made this too. You need to use it for God. God has always had proclaimers of his truth. And he can pick anyone to do it. Isaiah 62 says, Go through, go through the gates. Prepare ye the way of the people. Cast up, cast up the highway. Gather out of the stones. Lift up the standard for the people. Behold, the Lord hath proclaimed the end of the world. Say ye unto the daughters of Zion, Behold, thy salvation cometh. Behold, his reward is with him, and his work is before him. And they shall call him the, they shall call them the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord. Thou shalt be called sought out a city not forsaken. That's from the Old Testament. Things like that. Get out there and tell somebody. Raise a ruckus. I'm fascinated with early radio. My, 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 my uncle Charlie and my family, he was a radio guy. Uh, uh, he worked for the Naval Research Laboratory. I've told you that before. Ended up doing satellite stuff. But in the early days, uh, in the back in the teens and the 20s, of the 20th century, people would literally have to build their own radio sets if they were going to hear anything. And they had little crystals and, you know, they could go and buy tubes and they, they'd buy the plans and the things they built, you know, were really ugly looking, but they worked. And in the 20s, uh, they started with what we now call commercial radio. And radio stations, uh, the radio announcers was just anyone that happened to be around the mic. The coffee boy, you know, here, say something. <laughs> you know, oh, oh, yeah, you're the guy that mows the grass, say something. You know, uh, and, and it was just kind of all goofed up and, you know, it wasn't really organized. But by the mid-20s, you actually had professional announcers. So it didn't take for a while. And there was a man named uh, Brokenshire, and he was a famous New York announcer. Uh, of course, the stations didn't have much range, so a lot of people didn't know him except in, in New York where he broadcast. Uh, one of the things he covered early was the Democratic Convention uh, for president of uh, that year. And during his broadcast, he was, he was there at the convention hall. They had a booth set up. Uh, down on the floor, a fight broke out between some of the delegates. So this guy had a really good sense of humor. So he started calling the fight like it was a prize fight. And here comes Senator Smith, and he's got a right cut up uppercut. And oh, here comes, you know, uh, Mr. Greenfield. And oh, look at here. here. <laughs> and, and there's a, a left cross. And oh, oh, he got it in the stomach, you know. And about the time he got in the middle of the thing, his boss turned on the receiver at the radio station and was hearing all this. They said, what in the world is going on? He's supposed to be at the Democratic Convention, not at a prize fight. So he called down to the booth, and he said, cut the guy off. And, they, and of course, they cut him off. They got, they got all these phone calls from people saying they thought that was the funniest thing they'd ever heard put it back on the radio. <laughs> uh, you know, sometimes the truth is not always what people expect it is. You can use a little bit of humor. Sometimes you can get tough with people. But as Christians, we work for God. And you know what the good news is? God will reward you for doing his work. Revelation 22, 12 says, Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. Jesus got a bag of goodies. He wants to give some to you. But you got to do something in return. In conclusion, I'd say, I'd say to the Lord, if I was you, make me a blessing. Romans 15 says, I am sure that when I come unto you, that I shall come in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ. 
Now I beseech you, brethren, for the Lord Jesus Christ's sake, and for the love of the Spirit that you strive together with me in your prayers to God for me. That I may be delivered from them that do not believe in Judea. And that my service which I have for Jerusalem may be accepted of the saints. That I may come unto you with joy by the will of God. That, I may be, that you may be refreshed. And the God of peace be with you all. Amen. Look, Paul saying here he worked hard to be a blessing he himself was put in danger even by some of the brethren but paul's highest wish was to serve god and be a blessing to other people out on the highways and byways of life many are weary and sad Carry the sunshine where darkness is rife, making the sorrowing glad. Tell the sweet story of Christ and his love. Tell of his power to forgive. Others will trust him if only you prove true every moment you live. Make me a blessing make me a blessing out of my life let jesus shine make me a blessing oh savior i pray make me a blessing to someone Today, give as was given to you in your need. Love as the Master loved you. Be to the helpless a helper indeed. Unto your mission be true. Make me a blessing. Sing with me. Make me a blessing out of my life. May Jesus shine. Make me a blessing. O oh, Savior, I pray. Make me a blessing to someone today. Heavenly Father, Lord God, there's no way to really give an invitation to this except to go out and just be a blessing to people. So I pray as we leave this place, we'll determine in our hearts God, that we're going to go out and find someone to be a blessing to this afternoon. And tomorrow when we wake up, and Tuesday, and Wednesday, and Thursday, and Friday, and for the rest of our lives, get up and say, God, use me. God, help me to be a blessing. Lord, please help us. Come back and get us soon, Lord. Until then, make us a blessing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.